Hello, my name is Nick Sadeghi, and I'm going to be speaking about Atenolol. Atenolol can also go by its brand name, Tenormin. It belongs to a family of drugs known as beta blockers. It's used most commonly to treat cardiovascular disease like high blood pressure, stable angina, as well as post-MI, and other possible reasons. It works at a basic level by slowing down the heart by reducing its workload. Atenolol is FDA approved for acute MI, chronic angina pectoris, as well as hypertension. Although it is typically used off-label for various dysrhythmias, as well as vascular migraines. For administration, it's pretty basic. Take once or twice daily by mouth with or without food. Some common side effects that patients might run into while taking this medication consist of bradycardia, cold extremities, hypotension, dizziness, fatigue, and or depression. Some more serious side effects that the patients need to be aware of, and if they do experience any of these to contact their primary care right away or call 911 if it is a medical emergency, are related to cardiovascular effects like heart failure, MI, any ventricular arrhythmias, endocrine functions, specifically those related to the thyroid, immune functions like anaphylaxis or lupus, as well as res respiratory functions like pulmonary embolism. Mechanism of action. So atenolol is a cardioselective synthetic beta-1 adrenal receptor blocking agent without intrinsic sympathomimetic activity. It works by binding to beta-1 adrenergic receptors found in vascular smooth muscle and in the heart, blocking positive enotropic and chronotropic actions of endogenous catecholamines like norepi and epi. This results in a block of symp sympathetic stimulation, which results in reduced heart rate, blood pressure, and contractility. It has little to no effect on beta-2 receptors except at higher doses. Atenol is typically prescribed in oral tablet forms. It can be had in generic as well as brand uh, Tenormin. The tablet forms are found in tablets ranging from 25 milligram, 50 milligram, and 100 milligram, both in generic and the brand name. An IV formulation does exist, and these oral tablets can be compounded into an oral suspension as well. Here we have our more specific oral dosage recommendations for the FDA approved usages. Starting with angina, we can see that for initial usages, patients are gonna start at 50 milligrams once daily, and then this can be increased at weekly intervals based on the frequency and severity of symptoms. Usual range is in between 50 and 100 milligrams once daily. For hypertension, the use is recommended only for patients with specific comorbidities like MI or arrhythmia. And then for dosage recommendation, initially start at 25 milligrams once or twice daily, and then this can be increased based upon the patient's response or tolerability up to 100 milligrams per day in one to two uh, divided doses. For MI, initially start at 25 to 50 milligrams twice daily, and then this can be increased based upon the patient's heart rate and blood pressure up to a max daily dose of 100 milligrams, and this can be administered in one or two doses. Here we have our off-label dosage recommendations. Starting with AFib, we're gonna start initially at 25 milligrams once daily, and this can be increased to achieve ventricular rate control, although the usual range lies in between 25 to 100 milligrams once daily. For migraine prophylaxis, we're gonna start at 25 milligrams once daily, and then this can be increased based upon the patient's response as well as tolerability up to 100 milligram once daily dose. Um, it's important to remember to maintain this regimen for three months before considering it as treatment failure. For supraventricular tachycardia, SVT, we're gonna start at 25 to 50 milligrams once daily, and then this can be increased based upon the patient response or tolerability up to a max daily dose of 100 milligrams. So there are some dosage adjustments to be aware of when taking this medication. One, for renal impairment, if creatinine clearance is above 35 mils per min, um, usual doses can be administered with no adjustments. If the creatinine clearance is in between 15 to 35, the max daily dose should not exceed 50 milligrams. If the creatinine clearance is below 15, the max dose should be even lowered further to 25 milligrams per day. For geriatric patients, initiate therapy at the low end of dosing range. 
here are some warnings and precautions to be aware of while taking a tenolol. Anaphylactic reactions, bronchospastic disease, conduction abnormalities, diabetes. This medication might, may mask the symptoms of hypoglycemia or may even potentiate hypoglycemia. Heart failure, myasthenia gravis, renal impairment, thyroid disease. Like the hypoglycemia mentioned before, this medication can mask the signs of hyperthyroidism. And then the patients should also be aware of to not avoid abrupt discontinuation of this medication. So strong contraindications. Um, cardiogenic shock, obviously, this is relating, the medication is directly working on the heart, so we don't want to exacerbate that condition any further. Any hypersensitivity to atenolol or components of the drug, overt cardiac failure, second and third degree heart block, as well as any sinus bradycardia. Monitoring. So for monitoring, we do want to monitor blood pressure, heart rate, as well as ECGs. Um, being that this medication is going to directly slow down the heart rate as well as lower blood pressure. So we have to be aware of those as well as symptoms of uh, altered blood pressure like hypo, hypotension and all of uh, the related symptoms with that. For efficacy, we do want to see if we're treating for hypertension that the blood pressure, blood pressure is reducing. For coronary atherosclerosis, we do want to see reduction in chest pain like the angina is resolving. Um, renal function and renally compromised or geriatric patients with hypertension or MI. And here are my references. Thank you so much.